Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. So I just stumbled onto a, a Facebook page that was recommended to me and I joined it. And one of the topics that I saw on it was should, or actually who should clean the mats in a Jiu Jitsu studio? You know, why that's such a big deal? You know, there are a lot of comments on it. Why that's such a big deal, I don't know. Because the mats have to be cleaned. It's as simple as that. But I guess it really comes down to the culture of the studio or the, the way the owner wants to have things, the school owner wants to have things done. Now, it, I think the cleaning of the mats really falls, the responsibility of it, falls on whoever's responsibility it is. Now, I know that sounds like a pretty simplistic answer, but let me kind of explain. If the school is a club, meaning you're looking at a, at a few people that get together and say, hey, let's, let's get to training and you know everybody's gonna pay dues and there will be no owner of the school, maybe I might be in charge. And these dues go for just paying for the, the upkeep or the, or the facility and the upkeep of the location. So there's really no owner, there's no head. Uh, there may be a highest ranking person, but everybody who is the member of it, uh, who are members of it, they're kind of responsible for it in any given way. Kind of like, uh, I guess, if they were partners in a business, right? Uh, except they're partners in a, in a little club. It could be a co-op. It could be however you want to call it. It could be one of those garage type things, uh, Gracie garage things. Now, of course, it's in somebody's garage, but it's more like a club and not like a business. Now, a lot of judo schools are that way. They're not really set up as businesses. They're just set up as clubs and they're not for profit. The sensei just happens to be the highest ranking one there and he does all the teaching and everything runs the way he wants it to be. But everybody takes a personal responsibility in that studio, whether it be for the upkeep or the setting up of the mats, the breakdown of the mats, the cleaning of the mats, uh, events, all that kind of stuff. You know, that's all, uh, it kind of falls on everybody's shoulders, not just one person's shoulders. Now, if that's the case, I would contend that the mat cleaning falls onto everybody's laps. Now you can, how many people does it take to clean the mats? I guess it depends on how large a mat surface you have. If it's not that big and it could be done by one person, then have that one person do it. You know, set up an assignment system, uh, have a board and have it written down. Today is this person's day, that day is the next person's day. And then that way everybody kind of gets to do it. Now this is assuming that cleaning the mats is a chore. A chore that is, it, it's necessary, it has to be done. But some people will look at it as, man, why do I have to do it? Other people look at it as, I really should get it done and I don't mind getting it done. So if that's the case, if, if, you, if it's a club, then everybody should kind of take part in making sure that the, the academy itself is clean. Whether it be mats, whether it be walls, whether it be floors, whether it be toilets, whether it be, you know, how you're going to do your geese. Maybe you're going to have uh, loner geese. I don't know how you would, but you know, somebody's got to be responsible for it. And also stuff like mop heads, that also needs to be cleaned and somebody needs to take advantage, uh, not advantage, tech, somebody needs to take responsibility for that. I've seen it now in, in business clubs, right? Clubs that are run as a business. I've seen it done a couple different ways. One way is when class is over, there's some students that will just go and grab the equipment and just start cleaning the mats. I don't know whether you sweep first and then mop or whether you just mop or whether you vacuum and then mop. Whatever your cleaning system is, it gets done by students, right? When class is over, they just go and get it done. There's no asking anyone to get it done. The instructor, the school owner, whatever, doesn't ask anybody, hey, can you take care of that for me? Students just grab the equipment and work. And I like that the best. That's an awesome system. You know, that's where they all take ownership in the club and they say, this is my club and I'm proud of my club and I'm going to do it. And even if it's not, even if it's a, a for-profit school, they, they just, they don't see it as anything but their club, their academy. So they take care of it. They're proud of it. Where they'll even go and clean the toilets, they'll mop the floors in addition to the mats. And that's one option. Another option is like what we do at Kama Jiu Jitsu, where we have a service come in and clean the academy itself, the entire studio, including the mats, once a week. Now, as we grow larger, you know, then it'll be more often. But right now, it's once a week. You know, we're, it's a small studio. I'm talking about the Texas studio. In our Austin studio, the students clean the studio. 
in the in the Irvine, California studio, the students clean the studio. But in the Flower Mound, Texas campus, we have a cleaning service that comes in and cleans it once a week. And the mats at every, uh, uh, you know, before every group of sessions. So I say group of sessions, meaning um, before the 6 a.m. class, before the 10 a.m. class, and before the evening classes, the mats will get cleaned. And it gets cleaned by the first instructor there or the, the main instructor, whoever, whoever is in charge of that class, they come in about 30 minutes early and they get the, the campus cleaned. Now, there, there are things where, let's say we run low on cleaning solution, that needs to be, you know, the, the jug needs to be refilled and that's done by whoever can get it done. You know, everybody knows that it takes a little while. Our faucets are not super high flow, so it's not as if it can be done in 30 seconds. It, it takes about three to five minutes to get it done, but somebody will, will get it done. There's, there's no assignment. It, it's just, you know, people fill it up when they're done. Or if, it, if they need to fill it up, you know, there have been times where I walk in and there's not enough cleaning solutions, so I'll just, you know, I'm, I'm in a little bit early and I'll go, and, uh, I'll go and fill the cleaning solution, then I'll proceed to clean. Uh, that means that I might be a little bit late because I wasn't counting on not having any cleaning solution in the bottle, but it's okay. It's, it's a few minutes late. I run a two-hour class, and I always run it. Um, I always run longer than the allotted time, so I don't think the students really mind. But there are times, you know, there are certain classes. So, for instance, the, the morning class, the early morning class, uh, you know, Bob's 6 a.m. class, oftentimes the students will, will get that cleaning done right after class and therefore have a clean mat for the 10 o'clock class, which uh, I know is much appreciated. But the students really take it on themselves. Nobody asks the students to do it. Nobody asks for help. It's just you get in there and, and you clean. And if somebody wants to help, please help. You know, we're never gonna, we're never gonna turn down help. But if you don't feel like helping, you're a member, then then don't help. It, it's not. It's never expected. It, you know, and that, and that's the, the thinking that I that I like to have, and, and that's the thinking Dave's always had as well. It's we always appreciate help, but we never expect help, and that goes for our home studios as well. You know, I have one student who who takes a private from me on Mondays, and he comes in early and he cleans the mat, <laughs> cleans the mat for his own private session with me. On the other hand, I have other students that will come in right on time and not even have a second thought about cleaning the mats. And it doesn't bother me either way. I appreciate any help I can get, but I don't expect it. And I, and I always allocate time to make sure it gets done. And, I never, and since I don't count on it, I'm never disappointed. So we do kind of run that hybrid model here. Sometimes you will have people, members, help. Uh, and, but for the most part here, the instructor will get it done. And that's kind of part of their, their uh, I guess, cost of participation, if you want to put it, in the uh, instructor training program. Uh, there are a few things that they, a few obligations they need to have, and one of them is making sure the mats are clean for their, for their, uh, their time when they're on board. So hopefully, you know, that will kind of help you figure out the whole thing about cleaning the mats. When in doubt, in your studio, clean them. Don't leave it for somebody else to do. If you like a clean studio, clean the studio. If you one of those, if you're one of those who doesn't mind a dirty studio, then chances are you're not going to clean the studio. It'll fall on somebody else's hands. But the goal is, I hope that we all have a clean studio. You know, I've been in studios where they were just utterly filthy. Come in with a white gi and it comes out brown. In fact, one of the locations we were at, you know, there's always a constant battle with cleaning the studio because it was a studio that other another martial art used. And they weren't as finicky about a clean mat as we were. So our guys would come back or they'd leave the studio with brown spots on their knees and on their shoulders, you know, where you tend to put weight when you're, when you're grappling. And that, that's, that's not, that wasn't acceptable to me. And that was one of the main reasons why we ended up uh, relocating our studio so we could have more control over the cleanliness of the studio. But, you know, rather than gripe about it, you know, I, I bring it up. I never expect anywhere else to, to keep their studio clean if I'm, if I'm leasing space within it, within another martial arts school. I, I do my best to keep it clean. But at the end of the day, if I'm fighting a losing battle, then I'll just pick up and move, which is what we end up doing, because that's really better for the studio. You, know, you don't want to be uh, that studio that has uh, dirty facilities, especially the mats where, where we put our faces. 
And we also, you know, have traditions in our studio that helps to keep the mat as clean as possible. For instance, when you walk into the studio, and even though our studio is clean, you walk into the studio on your on your shoes or your flip flops or sandals, whatever you want to call them, and you take them off when you step onto the mat. Conversely, when you get off of the mat, maybe you know you go to our refrigerator and you grab some water. You have to step off of the mat in order to get to walk to the refrigerator and grab it. You don't walk off onto the floor with bare feet. You step onto your sandals or into your shoes and you walk over to the fridge, grab your water, walk back to the stu uh, to the mat, step out of your shoes and step back onto the mat. So something is always covering your feet when you're off of the mat. That's kind of like how we do things. And it just you know when you have a culture of cleanliness in the studio, then that that helps to to breed that culture going forward and when people see how you clean your mats and how thoroughly you clean them and how often you clean them people kind of take it as a hint uh, to at least at a bare minimum be clean people and if they do decide they want to help with cleaning the studio then that's great but we're not it's not for since we're a, a for-profit school it's not ever expected you know we do try to build cleaning costs into the expenses of the studio now granted you know if if it turns out that our costs for cleaning end up escalating then obviously that would mean that our our, our memberships would have to increase in price too uh, but that's just the the nature of running the business and there are a lot of people that that just think to themselves you know that's what i'm paying for and they're right you know that is what they're paying for and that's why I say it's never a problem for me if members just come in and choose not to help clean. You know, that's, it's just not a big deal to me. But that's because that's the way I think about it. Some other instructors may think otherwise. And it's, you know, the thing is, though, some people, I, like I said, I've been to other studios that are not clean at all. And they just don't have a cleanliness mindset. You know, you walk on the mat and there's hair all over the place. And, and it, it could even be the first class of the, the time of the day. So, for instance... Maybe they had a class in the morning, and here I am, I come for the nighttime session, I'm a visiting professor, right, and, and I just step on the mat, and I, I first thing I look around, and I see, I, I see hair all over, which tells me it wasn't clean since the last session. And it's, it is what it is, you know, I, I don't ever make an issue out of it, because, because it's not, it, it just, it, you notice that kind of stuff is all. But everybody runs their studio the way they, they run it. So I hope that kind of helped to illuminate you on this whole wonderment, this whole thought process on who should clean the studios. If you have to ask who, then it's you. If it gets done, then it gets done, and that means you don't have to. But it always helps to lend a helping hand here and there. It's just that sense of community that we, we try to have in a, in a, in a school that we, we feel comfortable in. So I hope that helped to, uh, to answer that question. And you know, this is just a debate that will always go on. It, it will never, ever stop. But I thought I'd just kind of throw my two cents in on here and uh, let you know what we think. Anyway, hope all is well. Be sure to like and subscribe, especially if you got this far. Please, you know, like the video, subscribe to it. Uh, and, and better yet, even share it. You know, that helps to, to get our, our videos uh, more seen, which, which does help. That's all I got for you. Take care and happy trading. Bye now.